The Chinese rover Zhurong has sent back images that stun the scientific community. Beneath the red sands of Mars, there's a buried beach formed by ocean waves. This may be the first direct evidence that an ocean once washed over the Martian lowlands and that life may have had a chance to emerge on the red planet. In July 2020, China attempted something seemingly impossible, to send an orbiter, a lander, and a rover to Mars in a single launch. It was an all-or-nothing move, as this was their first mission to the Red Planet. And it succeeded. By February 2021, Tianwen-1 entered Mars orbit after a 290 million mile journey, and then came the real test. In May of 2021, the lander descended onto a broad northern plain called Utopia Planitia. Decades of NASA data had suggested that something special might lie beneath the flat surface of this region, possibly a vast deposit of water ice the size of Lake Superior. Utopia Planitia was chosen for its combination of relative safety and scientific importance. Despite enormous challenges, China pulled it off. The lander touched down gently and deployed the six-wheel Zhurong rover, making the People's Republic of China the second country ever to operate a rover on Mars. But unlike NASA's highly publicized rover missions, Zhurong's arrival was met in China with calm and confidence, a quiet milestone reached without fanfare. The rover, named after a mythical god of fire, only became internationally known once it began its journey. Over the course of the next Earth year from May 2021 to May 2022, Zhurong traveled 1.2 miles across the Martian terrain, studying the geology and climate of the plain. During this time, the Tianwen-1 orbiter relayed signals and mapped the planet from above, even spotting dust storms and serving as a weather scout. Together, this duo marked China's understated entry into Mars exploration, not just a quick flag planting, but a sustained scientific mission. And it laid the groundwork for a remarkable discovery hidden beneath Utopia's surface. As Zhurong rolled across the Utopia Planitia, it approached a sudden rise in the landscape, a long, steep, rocky ridge bordering the flat plain. Planetary geologists had theorized that this ridge might be an ancient shoreline, the edge of a vanished Martian ocean, but there'd never been any proof. However, the rover carried a tool designed to explore this very mystery, a ground-penetrating radar. Day after day, it sent radio waves into the ground and listened to the echoes, creating a picture of the subsurface layers along its 1.2-mile route. Roughly 33 feet below the surface, the radar picked up something remarkable, smooth, continuous sediment layers that sloped gently upward toward the ridge. These buried structures extended for miles, all tilted at about 15 degrees and a line parallel to the proposed shoreline. Scientists immediately recognized this type of cross-section. It looked exactly like an ancient beach preserved underground. A research team made up of Chinese scientists and international collaborators carefully studied the patterns. The structures don't look like sand dunes. They don't look like an impact crater. They don't look like lava flows. That's when we started thinking about oceans said Professor Michael Manga of UC Berkeley, a co-author of the study. On Earth, beach sand forms distinct inclined layers called prograding wedges, as waves gradually push sediment toward the shore. Jurong's data showed the same gentle rise. Unlike the random layers of wind-blown dunes, these deposits were uniform in one direction and lacked the chaotic mix typically left by meteor impacts or volcanic flows. In fact, the radar signal reflected a grain size similar to sand and a low dielectric constant. 
further evidence that these were loose sedimentary deposits as opposed to solid rock or ice. The decisive factor was their orientation. All the buried layers lay exactly parallel to the spot where orbital maps had long suggested the existence of an ancient ocean shoreline. It was as if Jurong had cut through the textbook example of an old coastal beach. For the first time, scientists had direct evidence of a Martian shoreline in Utopia Planitia. Previous missions and satellites had discovered river deltas and lake deposits elsewhere on Mars, but they never came across extensive oceanic beach sediments like these. The Utopia Basin, where the rover wandered, is the largest known impact basin on Mars. Jurong's radar vision has confirmed that the long-held theory of an ancient ocean out there was correct. The data suggests that the northern plains of Mars were once flooded by a massive body of water whose waves steadily deposited sand along the coast over time. Naturally, this discovery raises compelling questions. How long did this water world exist and could life have taken hold there? The thickness and extent of the beach deposits points to a long-term presence. These deposits, which reach the thickness of up to 115 feet in some places, accumulated over millions of years under the constant influence of waves. This was not a short-lived flood or a temporary lake. It was most likely a long-standing ocean that persisted for a significant portion of Martian history. Such a stable and calm shoreline could have been an oasis for life. Study co-author Benjamin Cardenas, a Penn State geoscientist, emphasized the importance of this discovery. The presence of these deposits requires that a good swath of the planet was hydrologically active for a prolonged period. Shorelines are great locations to look for evidence of past life. It's thought that the earliest life on Earth began at locations like this, near the interface of air and shallow water. In other words, around four billion years ago, Mars may have had all the necessary ingredients for life, water, nutrients from sediment, and time. The ancient Martian coast was not a place of violent destruction, but rather a gentler, perhaps even life-friendly zone. Geological data from Jerome shows no signs of catastrophic breaches or rapid drying along its path. The beach formed gradually, indicating a climate that supported liquid water and possibly an oceanic cycle. Mars must have had a denser atmosphere and warmer temperatures to maintain an open ocean, conditions that would also have been favorable to microbial life had it ever arisen. Previous missions have tried many different methods in search of evidence of life on Mars, from the Viking soil experiments to drilling of ancient lake bed rocks by NASA's Perseverance. None had found direct evidence of organic life yet, but they have shown that Mars once had a habitable condition, including hot springs, rivers, and lakes. Jurong now adds the strongest case yet for a stable hydrosphere on Mars, a genuine ocean shoreline. This has led scientists to reconsider the past. If we could go back three or four billion years, what would we see at Jerome's landing site? Perhaps we would witness waves lapping against a Martian shore under a pink sky or an ocean teeming with chemical activity. This hypothetical picture blurs the line between Earth and Mars, two planets that may once have both been blue. Yet this speculation only raises more questions about the potential existence of life on Mars. Did it begin on the red planet's fertile coast, just as it may have on Earth? And if so, could traces of those microbes still be hiding in the Martian soil, waiting to be uncovered by a rover and brought back to Earth in a sample tube? It's important to note that Jurong's journey was not limited to the discovery of an ancient beach. It also revealed layers of Mars' underground history. The rover's ground-penetrating radar detected two distinct subsurface layers, suggesting that two major flooding or sedimentation events helped shape Utopia Planitia long ago. 
These could have been colossal floods, possibly triggered by asteroid impacts or climate shifts that deposited sediment or lava during separate eras. The same layers now resting beneath the rover wheels. Interestingly, while operating in high-frequency radar mode to study the top 16 feet of soil, at the time of conducting the scans, Jurong found no signs of subsurface water ice or liquid water near the landing site, although earlier orbital data hinted at a possible presence of subsurface ice in the Utopia region, the soil directly beneath the Mars rover appears to consist of nothing but dry layers of sand and rock. This puzzled scientist. Perhaps Jurong did not come across any hidden pockets of ice. Perhaps it lies deeper than the radar can detect, or maybe it is sublimated over time. Meanwhile, high above, the Tianwen-1 orbiter continued to observe Mars from space. In January 2022, it detected a massive dust storm near Olympus Mons, the tallest volcano in the solar system. The orbiter's camera captured the storm front looming over the Martian horizon, a vivid example of the dynamic weather patterns that can engulf the entire planet. Eventually, Jurong also experienced the effects of Mars's harsh climate. In May of 2022, as winter approached, the solar-powered rover entered into hibernation to wait out the season of cold and dust. It was expected to awaken in spring, but contact was never re-established, likely because its solar panels were covered in too much dust. After completing its primary mission and traveling more than 2,000 yards, Jurong is now silent, a victim of the aforementioned Martian dust. As for their future plans, China had already started preparing for future Mars missions, even before Jurong went quiet. At a 2023 Deep Space Science Conference, Chinese scientists revealed intriguing concept images. A small helicopter drone resembling NASA's Ingenuity and a six-legged robotic crawler, both part of an upcoming Mars mission. These devices are prototypes for sample collection in the Tianwen-3 Mars Sample Return Mission, and slides from the presentation showed a miniature helicopter designed to fly and retrieve samples beyond the lander's reach, along with a six-legged robot that could potentially help to drill or extract rocks from hard-to-reach places. This is a mindful approach. By using mobile robots, scientists aim to collect a wide range of Martian materials from a single landing site. The plan includes drilling up to seven feet for subsurface samples, collecting surface soil, and using the drone to grab interesting rocks within several hundred yards. Data from the Jurong rover and the Tianwen-1 orbiter are already helping shape this next major mission. But in the meantime, China is quietly gathering information and tools for Martian exploration. And this is only the beginning. Behind these scientific achievements lies a broader picture, China's methodical plan to claim leadership in Mars exploration. In late 2023, Chinese researchers announced the creation of a numerical model of the Martian atmosphere called GoMars. This complex simulation recreates cycles of dust, water, and carbon dioxide on Mars, providing a virtual testing ground for future missions. Using this model, engineers can forecast weather conditions at potential landing sites, design equipment capable of withstanding the planet's extreme cold and dust, and even create plans for future human outposts. The model can simulate the temperatures of the landing zone and scientists can use this data to design materials suitable for Mars rovers to cope with extreme cold, says Wang Bin, the lead researcher. And this is more than just an academic exercise. It's a strategic asset. By investing in simulations and modeling in the early stages, China is laying the foundation not just to visit Mars, but to eventually be able to live and work there. The next major step is the Mars Sample Return Program. The Tianwen-3 mission, now officially under development, is scheduled to launch in 2028 and aims to bring back at least 17 ounces of Martian material by 2031. 
The plan involves two launches of powerful Long March 5 rockets, one to send a lander ascent vehicle to Mars and the other to deliver a return orbiter. The lander will collect samples using the aforementioned drill, robotic arm, and potentially a drone, then launch them on a small rocket to rendezvous with the orbiter. If everything goes to plan, this ambitious mission will return Martian rocks to Earth by July 2031, two years ahead of the joint NASA and ESA sample return effort, which has been delayed until 2033 or even later. The geopolitical implications are clear. In a June 2025 draft report, the Mars Exploration Program Analysis Group made a statement. Returning the scientifically selected samples from Mars will help ensure the U.S. does not cede leadership in deep space to other nations, such as China. Top American officials share that concern. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson warned that if China is the first to succeed, it could become another Sputnik moment echoing the shock of the Soviet Union's first satellite launch that sparked the original space race with the United States. Indeed, we are witnessing a new space race. But this time, the finish line is not just Earth orbit or a flag on the moon. This time, the goal is to establish a permanent presence on Mars. Data like Jurong's discovery of an ancient ocean is highly valuable because it tells us where to land where to drill, and what to look for. China is already evaluating 19 possible landing sites for a Tianwen-3, focusing on areas where water used to be and where traces of life may still be preserved. The search has been narrowed to latitudes between 17 degrees and 30 degrees north, balancing engineering limitations with the search for biosignatures. One of the top candidates, as noted by Brown University geologist James Head, is actually the aforementioned Utopia Planitia. Since China is already familiar with its landscape and it may contain evidence of life within ancient shoreline deposits. On the U.S. side, NASA's Perseverance rover is collecting and caching samples in Jezero Crater. But due to budget constraints, its return mission is under threat. In 2025, the White House proposed canceling NASA's MSR program due to budget overruns, sparking debates and renewed attempts to secure funding in Congress. All of this points to the fact that Mars has become a focal point of global strategy and competition. The country that retrieves key samples, masters landing technology, and possibly finds evidence of life will earn prestige comparable to a new giant leap for mankind. Chinese officials and scientists speak of open collaboration, inviting international partners and sharing samples even as they race toward the lead. On Mars, the game is on, and it's not just about bragging rights. It's about scientific leadership, technological innovation, and potentially the first foothold for humans on another planet. The question that comes up more and more is no longer if humans will go to the red planet. But who will build the first base on Mars? China or the United States? <laughs>